So today we're going to see what would have happened if Deion Sanders just chose baseball. Obviously, Primetime was a two-sport athlete in the NFL and MLB, and surprisingly, he had a nine-year career in Major League Baseball, debuting in 89 with the Yankees and actually kind of really breaking out in 1992 with the Braves. That year, he hit 304 and then in the World Series hit over 500 and did it with a broken foot. Pretty impressive. The only issue with his nine-year career was that he really only played about 90 games each season. So if you really want to be picky about it, he really only played like four and a half seasons. So that's why I want to replay his career and see what would have happened if he just played in the major leagues. So we're going to have a 21 year old Deion Sanders, the same age that he broke into the major leagues. And obviously we're going to start him with the Yankees as well, just because that's the team that he was drafted by. I really wanted to do it in the same year in 1989, but sadly MLB the shows like historic rosters just aren't that good. One, because MLB The Show doesn't have any, so people actually have to make their own. But the closest one I could find was in 1984 or 1994, which can't be using those. I think replaying a 1989 year would be really cool, but sadly, I just can't do it. The closest one I said was either five years prior to Dion or five years after Dion started his career. So since I couldn't find a roster that was good enough, that was around the time that Dion played, we're going to throw him into today's era and see how he would do. We're at August 1st of the first season and the Yankees need a little bit of a boost. They currently sit seven games out in the East, which not ideal but luckily only two and a half games out of the wild card so this is just the time they need to get a little bit of a spark and to do that Deion sanders has been added to the major league roster the growth is pretty good plus five for both contact and to be honest actually the rest of the hitting stats look really really good so it'll be interesting to see how he performs because in real life first season wasn't great for him granted he only did play 14 games so it's kind of hard to judge him on that but hopefully he does a little bit better here even after the introduction of Deion sanders the yankees still weren't good enough throughout the year finishing 84 and 78 fourth in the east and four games out of a wild card spot so the yankees no postseason there would be no rookie of the year for Deion sanders so let's go see how he did with his first season in terms of growth he's up to an 80 overall so that's actually pretty good still 21 years old and as you can see plus nine plus seven for his contact numbers no power versus right but seven for power versus left and the rest of the numbers going up pretty impressive. He would end up playing 48 games, having 47 hits, seven doubles, four triples, and four home runs. Finished with a 258 average and a 751 OPS. So overall, not too bad. He did have 182 at bats, so he does lose his rookie status moving into the future. But you know what? Not a bad first season. So with season one out of the way, let's get to season two. The year finished with the Rangers ending up winning the World Series where Ezekiel Duran was the MVP and they ended up beating the Dodgers where Will Smith was the postseason MVP for them. The actual MVPs were Otani and Juan Soto. And as you can see, the Cy Young winners were Spencer Strider and Jacob DeGrom. But that's enough for season one. Let's get to season two now. We're at halfway through the second season. And as you can see, the Yankees are in trouble. And Deion Sanders, it doesn't look like he's developing too much. And because of that, you can kind of see the season not going that great. Average is down, on base percentage is down, OPS is down. But you know what? Home runs and doubles went up. But I guess he's had double the at-bats too. But overall, it's not looking too good for the Yankees. And I, I, I can see why. The lineup, not great. And in real life, Deion Sanders actually left the Yankees after his like second season where he ended up going to the Braves. And we could move to the Braves where he could end up playing left field where the Braves could really use a better hitter because Marcelo Zuna is getting older and is also heading into a contract year. Also, the Braves are atop the East and one of the best teams in baseball currently actually ranked the number one team. So it'll be interesting to see what happens this offseason. In terms of MVP, it was Mike Trout and Shohei Otani who has joined the Dodgers, who also would win the Cy Young and Shane McClanahan would win it on the American League side. World Series MVP would be Brandon Lau, who the Rays ended up beating the Dodgers. So the Dodgers are runners up in back to back years. So for season three, the Yankees once again didn't make many improvements to the team. And actually, I think they got worse with labor leaving them. And when you look at the Orioles who are continuing to improve with their young core, you've got Juan Soto on the Red Sox now. The Rays are coming off of a World Series victory. 
And even the Blue Jays are at least doing something, adding players like Lane Thomas and still improving with the young players that they've got. The Yankees, not looking great. But even though the Yankees aren't doing that great, Deion Sanders, we're going to keep him with them and going to see how he can do with this squad. So let's simulate season three. And staying with the Yankees would prove to be the right decision for Deion Sanders because in season three, the Yankees would clinch a wild card spot. Yes, they're 20 games out in the East, but they're a wild card team. That's all that matters. Judge would take home MVP along with Ozzy Albies, along Bobby Miller would be the Cy Young, and Freddie Peralta would be as well. And taking a look at the team, Deion Sanders up to an 85 overall. Minus six versus lefties though, not ideal. But plus four versus righties, the rest of his hitting numbers are going up. And let's see how he did as uh, like just overall for the whole year. So 166 hits, which is a career high, 40 doubles, which is awesome to see, 15 home runs, eight triples, and a 268 average with a 781 OPS. So definitely a career year. It looks like he's finally starting to get his, his, his feet set in the majors. He also stole 31 bases and got caught 13 times, which kind of seems like a normal Deion stat line. He did get caught quite a few times in his major league career, but there it is, Deion Sanders, the lefty numbers going down, definitely don't want to see that, but up to an 85, had a career year, and it may not be crazy numbers, but you know what, we're just getting started, and he's only 23 years old. So postseason time, how are the Yankees gonna do against the Guardians here? 14 to two to start it off is not what you want to see. They win 63 for the next one, and in the final game, elimination the angels were a world series team so trout's gonna get his world series ring he ended up being the postseason mvp and they beat the braves season four it's back to the yankees being poor nine nope not 97 79 and 83 24 games out of the division and as you can see the rays are ranked number one the orioles are fifth the red sox are seventh it's not looking good even the yankees are ranked eighth they're just not they're just not winning wild card they were 10 games out so even there they really weren't competitive and it makes sense, right? The the Red Sox are getting better. They've added O'Neill Cruz on top of that. Walker Bueller's there as well. So the team is improving. The Rays have added Luis Robert Jr. You've got the Blue Jays who were behind them, which makes sense based off of that lineup. And then, I mean, the Orioles squad looks absolutely insane. So, and, you know, they've, they've added this guy who we won't we won't talk about it. but the yankees lineup just doesn't look that great especially like yeah it just it just doesn't look good and then aaron judge isn't getting any younger and he's going to start to regress like he is right now but we're here to talk about Deion sanders who's up to an 89 overall but the issue with him is he's not facing lefties um he's out of the lineup and it's just because you know you look at the lefty numbers they're clearly not improving but the righties are for sure and as you can see 152 hits he did have a few less at bats but around the same amount of doubles more home runs which is good to see more walks less strikeouts about the same amount of stolen bases but the average dip on base percentage slugging and ops so not as good of a year in terms of like the on base percentage and everything and it's just like one of those things where we just really need him to break out maybe having a better team would help maybe having better coaches would help as well but right now with the yankees things aren't looking great for Deion sanders and just the yankees in general we've got what two more years of arbitration so it'll be interesting to see how that plays out soto and otani were mvps and otani again with the cy young win and yeah we'll, we'll head to the off season let's see who wins the world series it was the Cubs where Seiya Suzuki was the MVP and they ended up beating the Orioles. So but honestly, it would probably be a pretty good game. Five and the Yankees missed the postseason by seven games, but they're currently ranked number two in all of baseball. And when you look at the lineup, I don't, I don't, I don't really understand that. Is, is the rest of the league that bad? Because like I'm looking at the team, there's some good ratings, but I can see why they're kind of struggling. But Deion Sanders up to a 91. It looks like he finishes the season on a little bit of a cold stretch, but he is 91 plus three for contact versus lefties. Power numbers, not really going up. Power and contact versus righties, not really going up. And it makes sense. He did not have a good year. And also he played way fewer games, which is not what you wanna see. Not what you wanna see at all. So Deion Sanders right now, not looking great honestly could be a candidate to be released um 2027 2028 he still has arbitration i think that 3.9 is more of just like an estimate of what he's going to make arbitration wise but these numbers are not good yikes that is a bad season 
for a war of 2.9 somehow. I, I, fielding has got to be helping him out a little bit. But yeah, those numbers are not good. And like I said, he's played way fewer games than previous seasons. Honestly, a career low if you give him like full seasons. So, uh oh, could be bad. MVP was once again Juan Soto and Shohei Otani. Cy Young, Gavin Williams was on the other side, which is pretty cool to see. And the World Series MVP went to Tristan Casas of the Boston Red Sox, who won the World Series. On the other side, the Dodgers fall short this time so there it is let's see what happens with Dion. honestly i could see the yankees releasing him just because they do have jason dominguez and a few other outfielders so for the 2028 season let's see if Dion sanders made the cut he did he's up to a 91 still or i guess i should say he's still a 91 but it'll be interesting to see what happens now they still have brian de la cruz who obviously they traded for him nolan jones who they traded for kirk they actually ended up signing in the offseason um, last year so it looks like the team is improving I think I kind of downplayed them at the end of last year I was actually kind of more worried that he would have gotten cut so he's got two more years including this season so he's got this year and next year and then becomes a free agent so all right let's see what happens I'm not gonna lie having a all-star appearance would be really nice but to be honest the seasons so far have been underwhelming for Deion Sanders so in his fifth full season, the Yankees actually make the postseason three games out of the East, and they're they're a wild card team, so can't complain them. They had the number can't complain there. They had the number one wild card spot, beating out the Angels and the Rangers. And sadly, still no All Star, still no award or anything like that. But Deion Sanders is up to a 93 overall, and had a pretty good season, but again, only 131 games played. So he's definitely out of that lefty lineup for sure. But 144 hits, 27 doubles, 24 home runs, which is a career high. So that's awesome to see. And 33 stolen bases, but a 275 average with a 358 on base percentage and an 838 OPS. So it looks like he's definitely out of that lefty lineup, which makes sense. The lefty numbers aren't that great. Who's playing the outfield instead? It's Jason Dominguez, who's hitting 211. So I mean, like, maybe you take your chances with Deion Sanders in the lineup anyways. I mean, it, could it get much worse than what Dominguez is putting up? So 5.5 war, which is actually a career high. He's up to 22.3 for his career. Pretty impressive. And like I said, we've got one more year after this year to see what he can do before he becomes a free agent. So things are looking good. Like at least now they're looking good because prior to this year, 2027 was a mess and realistically, Every other season wasn't that great besides the 2025 year. So hopefully things are finally turning around at 93 overall. At 26 years old, we might be starting to see the best from Deion Sanders. Like I said, no MVP, no awards or anything like that. No all-star game votes. And it comes down to this. They advance to the next round, which is awesome. They are facing the Red Sox, though. And the Red Sox do have a crazy good team. That's a good start. 1-1. One, one. Third game, they do lose. Oh man, and it comes down to this one. They're eliminated by the Red Sox. The offense went a little cold towards the end there. And it is going to be who who is gonna win the World Series? And to be honest, we gotta see who was the MVP too. The Brewers ended up winning it in a seven-game series against the Red Sox. So the Red Sox, they're a good team. Junior Caminero is a Ray in real life, but clearly he's a Brewer here. He is the World Series MVP. Tristan Casas is the postseason MVP. And Tristan Casas looks like he's a ball player now. Holy cow. Okay, okay. And of course, they also have Juan Soto, so it's not like you know, oh man, you know, Tristan Casas, that's their best player. No, they've got Soto, they've got Devers, they've got O'Neill Cruz, Tristan Casas, they've got a good team. And of course, you know, Walker Bueller was an addition too. So yeah, they've they've got a squad. Soto won his third MVP in a row for the regular season. Otani won it as well, which is crazy. Fritz Sizemore is a generational talent that went to the Rockies and he looks absolutely insane. Cy Young went to Julian Pacheco on the National League side, took it away from Shohei, and Dylan Cease won it on the American League side. So, man, I really want Deion Sanders to win some sort of award. So in what is going to be his sixth full season, I think the Yankees are going to be atop the East moving forward. I mean, they've got this guy who looks absolutely insane. Judge is still pretty decent at 89 overall 
And then, you know, there's Kirk at 94. You got Luciano, who's been playing second base, Spencer Jones, Nolan Jones. And then they just brought in Carlos Correa, and that's because they lost Anthony Volpe. But I'm looking at some of their pitchers, too. Bobby Miller, Ian Anderson. They've got a couple others. I think the only thing that might be an issue is actually the budget. Budget looks healthy at $121 million for the next year, $111 for the year after. So who knows? Deion Sanders might end up staying with the Yankees. I guess it really just depends. So will we finally get our first All-Star appearance? I hope so. And I seem to have jinxed the Yankees, but they're currently the third best team in all of baseball, but they only finished 79 and 83. So there's that. And the Red Sox were 91 and 71, even though they're ranked as number 20, which their pitching is the worst in baseball, but like everything else looks good. The Yankees should be doing way better. And they're 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 just they're not. Uh no award, but I guess we could take a look and see who was MVP. Yep, just Juan Soto having just a casual, like crazy spree where he's just winning every MVP known to man. Shohei, same thing. He's popping off doing crazy things. Pitching wise, not as good. But offensively, yeah, he's putting up some crazy numbers for sure. Cy Young went to Daniel Espino and Zach Gallen. And then if we take a look at what Deion Sanders is doing, he's up to a 97 overall and hit 274, which is awesome. But 97, ooh, look at those lefty numbers. Those lefty attribute growth looks insane he is going to get paid this year looks like he's having a career year 133 games and 29 home runs hit 274 with an 871 ops and a 510 slugging so he's still only playing 130 games he's still stealing a good amount of bases getting walked getting home runs getting doubles but no triples but that's that's just because he plays in yankee stadium where you know it's like a minor league stadium in terms of fence distance so basically hit down to right field you're, you're only getting a double you're only getting a double but besides the point where are we at war wise 6.4 that's that's a career high that's the best he's had and up to a 28.8 and yeah i mean i can't i can't really hype it up much more he had a he had a pretty solid season which is good love to see it really comparable to what he did last year he just he took it up a little bit in terms of power he went from a 480 to a 510 which is good the Padres end up winning the World Series where Dalton rushing is your World Series MVP Angels were also a team there who do have Jackson Holiday now and Nolan Gorman so there's that but they were the runners up this season okay all right it's off season time I I don't think the Yankees are gonna resign Dion I'll be very very surprised but let's see what happens and I was right, no offers currently on the board for him, but he's got another center fielder in Evan Carter who does have an offer with the Rangers. So, oh, also Drew Jones, also Dylan Cruz. Man, the center field class is stacked. Holy cow. How's Evan Carter been? Oh man, Evan Carter has been crazy good. Drew Jones, not so much. Dylan Cruz has been pretty solid too. So, okay, it's gonna be interesting to see what happens. Um, a couple teams could use a center fielder. It looks like a few teams could use a center fielder. So who's going to end up with Dion? Drew Jones leaves. Dion Sanders signs with the Diamondbacks. Eight years, 270 mil. All right. The Diamondbacks are currently ranked the 27th best team in baseball, which is not high at all. But Dion Sanders, Jordan Lawler, Perdomo, Corbin Carroll, Henry Davis, Andrew Vaughn. Oh, Brian De La Cruz. Okay. Uh, Tommy Troy looks decent and then adrian del castillo i think pitching wise yeah pitching's definitely lacking a little bit and i can see why they're they're pro oh, 23rd sorry not 27th 23rd but they do have the worst pitching makes sense so not sure the move for dion how it's going to play out i don't think he's going to be winning any world series with this team unless they absolutely turn it around but who knows who knows? He's only 28 years old, eight years now on this contract. Let's see what he can do in Arizona. Season seven went as expected with this Arizona Diamondbacks team. They're last in the West. What I will say though is the Dodgers, Giants, Padres, and even the Rockies actually have like decent teams. Like we'll take a look at it. So the Padres, Bo Bichette, Tatis, Pete Alonso, uh, Jazz Chisholm Jr., you got Jackson Merrill. Like they've got a good team, like, even their pitching. I mean, Salas is on the bench. They've got Sean Murphy on the bench, Ethan Salas. They've got Dalton rushing. Like, this is a good team. Pitching-wise, also very, very good. Giants-wise, bench looks strong. Pitching also looks very strong. And offensively, again, their, their top half of the lineup looks really good. And then when you move to the Dodgers, obviously the Dodgers are going to be good. They're always good. 
And then the Rockies, Rockies kind of low-key underrated. They got Lux, they've got the generational talent, Jordan Beck, Cam Collier. Pitching-wise, Dolander, Bieber, Carlton, Russell Wilson. Yeah, uh, Soroka, Nate Pearson. So like this team looks, the teams are actually pretty good. Um, but yeah, Diamondbacks, not so much, which yeah, I mean, based on the team, you can kind of see Deion Sanders is up to a 98 overall, which is awesome to see. And 28 years old, the lefty numbers are going up again. An awesome thing to see. He had 182 hits, played in almost every single game this season. 50 doubles, 27 home runs, almost 100 RBIs, and 25 stolen bases. So the stolen bases numbers went down a little bit, which sucks to see, but almost a 290 average with an 881 OPS and a 510 slugging. Numbers are looking great. War-wise, 7.2. So he's only getting better. Only two errors. Let's see if he actually won like maybe like a silver slug or anything, because I, I doubt he has. He's got some pretty tough competition. In this in this side on the nl but maybe maybe a gold glove no no all right well you know what 97 over 98 overall I'm, I'm pretty happy with the season he just put up with the diamondbacks there no postseason but maybe in the future we'll uh we'll get there or maybe you know maybe we ring chase we send him to a new team we'll have to wait and see the Mariners end up beating the Mets in the World Series. Alec Pearlson is the MVP. Okay, and Drew Gilbert was the postseason MVP along with Julio Rodriguez. Soto, once again, is winning MVP, which is, I don't even know how many at this point. Is that six in a row? Is that five in a row? That's crazy. Otani, same thing. How many in a row has he won? It's getting a little crazy. Rhett Lauder and Walker Bueller are the Cy Young winners. I don't, you keep a tally. How many has Soto and Otani won in terms of MVPs? Are they at Barry Bonds number seven yet? Cause it's gotta be close. It only took until year eight in the majors for Deion Sanders to make it to a all-star game. He is regressing a little bit, so we might see the best of Deion Sanders, but honestly a 287 average with an 843 OPS so far throughout the year, looks pretty good. So yeah, first all-star appearance in year eight. At the end of the year, Deion Sanders led the league in stolen bases with 29, which, okay. Uh, MVP went to Spencer Torkelson. Otani fell to second place. But Juan Soto, once again, won it on the other side. I mean, it's, ins it's insane at this point. Andrew Painter and Dexter Gomez are the Cy Young winners. Okay, no postseason for the Diamondbacks, but their team's actually looking pretty good. I think these two are going to be like their weak links as they do age. But overall, I think the team as a whole looks pretty good. I think they've got, yeah, they've got this guy who's got a potential at 32. Um, and they've got a couple others that could pop into the team. But Deion Sanders, 98 overall, plus 8 for contact versus left. But it looks like a couple other things are going down. And 187 hits, which is a career high. 33 home runs, again, a career high. 42 doubles, 58 walks, and 29 stolen bases. So 288 average with an 873 OPS and a 527 slugging. Pretty good year. Once again, like he's, he's looking good. 6.8 war, so not as good as the previous season, but I'm still pretty happy with the season that he's putting up. We're finally seeing the best of Deion Sanders. So eight years in the books, two more years till we get to 10 and actually make it longer than what Deion Sanders did in real life. So let's finish off the season. Let's see who wins the World Series, and then let's get to season nine. The Rockies actually win the World Series, which I said, hey, they're kind of a sneaky team. Gavin Lux is the World Series MVP, and Luis Angel Acuna was the postseason MVP for the Tigers, and James Outman was for the Rockies. So yeah, the Rockies actually made some moves this offseason. Holy cow. They've got Lux. They brought in Guerrero Jr. I think they also brought in Kowser, possibly. I mean, this team is insane. It's going to be tough to actually compete when the pitching looks like this. In season nine, Deion Sanders has made an all-star appearance or another all-star appearance. So here we are, as you can see at 30 years old, he's actually going up a little bit, which is which is good to see, which is good to see. 16 home runs, 20 doubles, 46 RBI. I mean, that's a pretty good season. Those are the type of numbers we're looking for from Deion. So let's see if he can continue to do that into his 30s. And let's, let's see how season nine finishes. Season nine over, you can see that the Diamondbacks have made the postseason and we do have a league leading stat, which it's it's the pitchers. It's not, oh, Deion Sanders had stolen bases. Okay, there we go, we have that. No award though, which again, super disappointing. You know, I feel like, I feel like we've been lacking that 
that award, that, that big award that we really need. Maybe a little Silver Slugger. He was in the mix. He was in the mix, but he wasn't an award winner. So here we go. Deion Sanders, still a 98 overall. Looks like a couple stats have gone down, regressed, but plus seven contact versus left. So sadly, I feel like the attributes that did go up at the all-star break did actually go down, except for contact left. But 177 hits, 38 doubles, 27 home runs, 11 triples, which I think is a career high, which honestly pretty impressive 27 home runs 92 rbis and 40 stolen bases which i also think is a career high but yeah 289 372 and an 891 ops honestly in terms of just the numbers for ops slugging on base percentage you know the stolen bases i feel like this would definitely be somewhat of a career year for him a really good fielding season he didn't win a gold glove with that kind of that fielding percentage really who who won it drew jones he was third i guess i mean like 18 assists i guess the putouts are what makes it different okay whatever uh but yeah honestly a decent season what about war wise what are we looking like we've got an 8.4 which is definitely his best for sure walk rate tied for like one of the best that he's had in his career strikeout rate was a little high compared to previous seasons but overall pretty good you know what that's pretty solid to see so yeah really solid season contract still got a, quite a bit left over but yeah let's head into season 10 after the postseason and let's see what we're looking like we have a win so now taking on the cardinals and let's see how they do against the cardinals once we get past all of these notifications so they win the first they win the second and I think that's two more wins there they're going to be taking on the Marlins or the Brewers and it is going to be the brewers okay that's good to see let's let's see what we've got going on here with the brewers to get to the world series to take on the blue jays or the mariners so game one an 11 to 10 win that's a big game there eight to zero for the next game a loss there a win 16 to four they're winning big they're scoring a lot of runs and they need one more game one more game to take on the blue jays in the world series and they do it so world series appearance for deon sanders against the blue jays and it is a one one series so far one two one three they're still alive they need to win this game and they don't they lose the world series to the blue jays which if we take a look at the team really quick pedro rivera jacob wilson harry ford vlad jr Everson Pereira. Okay, so an interesting squad. I think the pitching is is pretty juiced there. When you've got three high 90 overalls, that's pretty good. A couple 80s sprinkled in there. Bullpen looks really strong. So sadly, sadly, no, no World Series. And also no postseason MVP, which is disappointing. And a 299 average with three home runs and eight RBIs is actually pretty good. So I feel like the Diamondbacks did did well just just lacked that little bit to get that world series and i think the pitching was the difference there i think if you i mean even if we look at it you know nine to seven allowed nine runs allowed nine runs allowed 10 runs yeah i mean pitching kind of fell apart there at the end he's in 10 the final year we check in with Deion sanders unless of course he wins an mvp or a world series which hey maybe he will maybe we're gonna see a little bit of a late surge in his career league leading wise nothing there but that was pitchers but runs base on balls walks i guess i could have said that and then war with a 9.7 war which is awesome to see that's good an award please give us an award <sighs> rookie of the year rookie of the year so not that but we do have a silver slugger it looks like he had a really good season a 300 average 33 home runs and 111 rbis which I mean, yeah, those are some pretty good seasons right there. I feel like he definitely would have been in the uh, MVP conversation. Sadly, just a couple others had a little bit better of a season. Lineup wise, you know, 99 overall. We do see what's going on there. Crazy growth in terms of attributes. And again, a really good season. We saw what he was putting up. 186 hits, 40 doubles, 4 triples, 33 home runs, and 111 RBIs. Plus 100 walks, which is a lot like that is a career high by quite a bit and on top of that 40 stolen bases or 39 pretty close to 40 so 306 average a 410 on base percentage a 957 ops easily a career season for him 
And then on top of that, when you look at it, a 9.7 war, a uh, walk percentage way higher, K percentage way lower compared to the norm, or I guess compared to last season, even the year before with 18, but not his career best, which was 15.6. So after 10 seasons, we're sitting at a war of 60.8, which honestly, pretty solid. It puts him in the range. I'm looking at it right now of where Ichiro was, Harmon Killebrew, Jim Edmonds, Gary Sheffield, and also someone who's playing currently in Paul Goldschmidt. So after 10 seasons, Dion's doing pretty well. So with a few years left on his Diamondbacks contract, I'll see you guys at the end of his career. Maybe he signs with a new team. Maybe he wins an MVP. We'll have to wait and see. 2042, Deion Sanders has finally retired. And as you can see, 41 years old makes a little bit of sense. Played 15 years in the majors, had some good seasons after we finished looking at what his career would be like did finish with one season with the Guardians and it, it was an okay season it wasn't his best and then his last year with the Diamondbacks wasn't that great either but if you look at the the seasons before that I mean like a 324 with an 1.002 OPS which he wasn't even in the race for MVP with this year which is absolutely crazy to think about like that's that's kind of wild and then obviously 32 home runs with 102 RPIs so no MVP awards for Dion when when you look at these three these like these four seasons right here those are all really really good years so sadly no mvps we did we did see a couple of awards along the way you know silver slugger and things like that but stolen bases almost 500 throughout his career 376 total home runs and 2500 hits not bad when you look at the average a 280 with 845 ops for a 15 year career is very very impressive especially at 358 on base percentage he definitely had a good stretch in his career where he was getting on base at a very good level and then of course when you take a look at the war as a whole you know you kind of see like a 9.8 8.7 and then the last couple seasons were a little bit down but 96.4 really good 96.4 puts him 34th all time in terms of war. You have Carl Yastrzemski, Eddie Matthews, Cal Ripken Jr. and Roberto Clemente all within that range. So Deion Sanders, I mean, just based off of war, average OPS and numbers wise, he's putting up Hall of Fame numbers. Like he's actually a very, very good baseball player. So with that being said, is he a Hall of Famer? According to MLB The Show, no. And that's the Deion Sanders career sim. In the comment section, let me know. Do you think he's a Hall of Famer? I want to know your thoughts. I, I mean, based on the numbers that we just saw, I, I would say so. I feel like he put up some really good numbers. And when you throw in the steals numbers, I feel like he did it. But there it is. If you enjoyed the content, I think you'll really enjoy this video right here. Other than that, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.